Good morning GIS 300. It's time to talk about attribute queries in ArcGIS Pro. You've done this before in Q, so you know the concept, but the language is just a little bit different. I'm going to download this here as a shapefile, and I'm going to make that available in Brightspace if you want to download directly. That has to be extracted like anything else or unzipped. After that, map, add data, going into here, and you see, I don't actually see my California folder I just created for this. See this little refresh button here? Refresh there. California is now there. And there's my fire perimeters all. Okay. And there they all are. Let's open up this attribute table and see what we're working with. So right click, attribute table. There's that. So we have the year, the state, the fire name, the cause by code, which we could look up, the GIS acres, so once that polygon has been digitized, that's the geometry calculated for it. So this one is 58,000 acres. Let's go ahead and select that. So you see I just clicked that gray box there that's selected now. I don't see it on the map, so I can right click there, zoom to, and that shows the perimeter of that feature. So I can see that this fire overlaps with several other fires. I want to see only the fires from, say, 2007. Under the Map tab, we have Select by Attributes. Click once, and that brings up the Geoprocessing Select Layer by Attribute. And we are looking at the input rows, California Fire Perimeter, so that's the data set it's reading from. We want to create a new selection using a new expression. And now we're going to write that expression using these drop downs here. So where year is equal to, I have some other options here, 2007. So scroll, 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 there's 2007, and run. Now every fire where the year is 2007 is selected, and every other fire is not selected. And of course, we have to scroll way down to see that. But there, 1970, not selected. Next, right click, data, export features. It's going to take these input features and only the selected ones by default, place that in the default geodatabase for this map project. And I'm going to call this Fires 2007 California and run. So now I'm going to clear that selection, I'm going to close that attribute table, and uncheck the original data layer. Now I have only fires from 2007. I can right-click, zoom to layer, and those are the fire perimeters for 2007. Now say I only want the larger fires from 2007. I can right-click, open attribute table, and then I want to select by attributes and input rows from the fire 2007, selection type, new selection, new expression, where GIS acres, where did that go, there we go, and instead of is equal to is greater than, and I can scroll through and take one of these options, or I could type something in here, but let's just say greater than 960. So it's not going to select the one that's 960 because it's got to be greater than that, and it's less than 1,000. So this is going to select every polygon where the acreage is greater than 1,000. So that's because there is nothing between 960 and 1,004. I could also just delete that and type in 1,000. Exactly the same rows would be selected in either case, but let's go ahead and run that and that has selected those ones where the acreage is over a thousand acres. Now I can repeat the process of exporting. Right click, data, export features. From those input features to the default location, and again that cannot be your C drive, that's got to be your Google Drive file stream or else your computer will wipe it if you're using one of our lab computers. And that's going to be fires 2007 CA 
1000. And then when I run that, the output is those fires from 2007 in California that were greater than 1000 acres. You can also do two things at once. So let's check back on our California fire perimeters and select by attributes from that layer and create a new selection where the year is equal to 2007, just like we did before. But we're also going to add a clause here and where the GIS acres is greater than 1,000, not 10,000, 1,000, thank you. So this gives exactly the same output as we did in the two-step process, but it does it in one step. And that AND statement does exactly what it does in Q. It refines the query, meaning that both of these criteria have got to be met. So let's run that and see what it means. So we have 47 of the 20,000 selected. If we right-click and open the attribute table here, we should also see, yeah, there's 47 there. So we've got the same output. Just like in Q, if we change that AND to an OR, that broadens the query. So it's got to be in 2007, or anything over 1,000 acres would also do. So run. Now we have 4,272. So the OR lets it be either one of these. The AND means it's got to be both. And we can also search for text. So here we have fire name, and that's string or text type data. So we can go where fire name contains the text. And let's say we all have heard of the campfire. So search for camp and run. And we can see 88 of these 20,814 records have been selected. If you hit this button here, show selected records, these are all the ones where the fire name includes the word camp. And we'll come back to that one, but if we're looking for the campfire that we've all heard of, that's going to be the big one in 2018. So here's our 2018 records. I'll scroll over a little bit. GIS acres, 153,335. That looks like the one there. So if we select that, it becomes highlighted in yellow. That's the one there. I can right click and zoom to. And that, I believe, is the perimeter of the campfire we've all heard of. But what that query has done is taken any fire name that includes the word camp. So camp us, H2 camp, camp, let's see, horse camp, camp, happy camp. Probably wasn't a happy camp when it was on fire. That is a, a racial slur for the native people of the region. And that has persisted in fire names, and the name of uh, what is also called the gray pine. And that looks like 1945. Right click, zoom to, and let's see what's there now. So let's change the base map to imagery, updating base layer. And it looks like that's farm, farm, farm. And let's go ahead and just uncheck that for right now. So presumably there was an internment camp there. So you could further refine this query by adding clauses. So we could say where a fire name contains camp and the GIS acres is greater than, let's just try 100,000 here, and run that. That's going to narrow that right down to two, camp and camp bell. But I usually draw the limit at two or three clauses per query. And that's because once you start getting a whole long list of things, it's pretty easy to have things interact in ways you didn't anticipate. Or if you make a small mistake, that propagates through the entire selection. So what I like to do is just two or three things at most per step. And then I export that layer, look at that, make sure it's done the thing that I've wanted it to do, and then go ahead and continue refining, continue drilling down with more specific queries. That allows me to check and confirm that I'm doing what I intend to do. This is a very powerful tool, but if you just use one wrong and or or, or one is greater than or equal to, where you meant to do greater than, make any one of these selections, it will result in a different output. 
And if you do that in error, then if you have a big long list of clauses, it takes more time to figure out where you made that error. Where if you've gone a few steps at a time, you can track back and say, okay, I was good to hear, but then something's gone wrong here, I need to check that step. So you can do this with any data layer. Of course, text is going to be queried differently from numbers, but whatever attribute fields you have, you can query those to select the kind of data that you're looking for.